If your heart is not right, you'll walk out like a little five-year-old sissy kid with your big bottom lip tucked up saying, Preacher's picking on me. Sissy kid. Don't be a sissy, amen? Amen. He that hath ears, let him hear. How's your hearing this morning? Not only are there ears that itch, but secondly, there are ears that are dull of hearing. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Ears that are dull of hearing. This doesn't necessarily mean they don't want to hear. It's just that it's kind of dull. I'll give you the definition of that in just a second. Matthew chapter 13, look at verse 15. I want to start at... Uh, Ah, let's start at verse 15. Ah, let's start at verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? There is that them again. He answered and said unto them, Because it is, not, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it is not given. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Why? Verse 15. For this people heart is waxed gross. That is, it's become dull. Their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed, he says, are your eyes... For they see, and your ears, for they hear. Amen. The word dullness speaks of several things, but I'll give you two things. Number one, no depth. And number two, little substance. No depth, little substance. It's not that they didn't understand what was being said. It's that they did not want to understand what was being, understood, what was being said. If you will, these are ears that are shallow to God's Word and devoid of spiritual understanding. Now, look at the context. Look at Matthew 13 again and look at verse 3. And let me start with this parable. And he defines somebody who's just like this in the parable. Somebody who is dull of hearing. Somebody who has no depth. Somebody who has little substance, if any. Look at verse number 3 of Matthew 13. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now, we know who this sower is, because Christ gives the definition of every little point a little bit later in chapter 13. And in verse 4 it says, And when he sowed, some of that seed fell by the wayside. And the fowls, the birds of the air, came and devoured them up. By the way, that is a good, practical illustration that they understood. And if you were to preach that message somewhere in the Midwest, they'd understand it too, or the San Joaquin Valley. Right? They understand. You take some seed, you spread it out, guess what? The crows aren't too far behind, or any other bird for that matter. And there's always going to be some seed falling where it needs to see a fall, and there's always going to be some seed that kind of fall on the wayside, on the, on the outskirts, or not where they're supposed to be, and the Bible says the fowls come and devour them. And then he mentions a second person. He says in verse 5, Some of that seed fell upon stony places. Now, interestingly enough, weeds can grow in stony places. Plants can grow in stony places. But, it says here in verse 5, Where they had not much earth. And forthwith, because of that, they sprung up, and because they had no deepness of earth. Catch it? And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. May I say, there are plenty of Christians in churches today, and there might even be a few in this room this morning, whose ears are dull to the truth, and their Christian life is no deeper than a one-inch water puddle. Amen, preacher! You've got it! They speak of victory, but will not hear of defeat. It's amazing. These Christians will say, well, you know, I want to live the victorious life. And then the first defeat happens, and all of a sudden, victory never happens again. Can I say something to you? 
If you're going to achieve victory, you're going to have to have a few defeats under your belt. Amen. Amen. These people speak of overcoming, but will not hear of attempting something great for God. They're content with reading about what other great men and great women have done for God, and they bemoan the fact that they, God's not using me in that way. It's because you haven't stepped out. There's no depth. There's, no, there's dullness. They speak of serving God, but will not hear of lifting a finger for Him. Amen. 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 What happened here? Did we, a little bit of an atheist convention happen? <laughs> These folks have a desire to serve God, but only until the first trial comes along and derails them from service. sit there with your halo on your head, I'll go out and get me a screwdriver and unscrew it. <laughs> There's no depth to their hearing. Their root of the truth is only superficial. They've got just enough to know a little bit, but not enough to go deep. It is easily uprooted and cast aside by the first sign of tribulation in their life. I ask you, how's your hearing this morning? I want you to look at the commentary that Jesus Christ gives in Matthew 13. And he says in verse 18, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. He gives the interpretation of what I read to you. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, those are the fowls that were pictured a moment ago, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Those are the seeds that kind of fell off to the side, not where they're supposed to go. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. The word anon means joyfully. They receive it. Yet hath he not root in himself. But the word is dureth here, but endureth. For a while. That is, they, they're excited for a while. They're ready to charge hell with a squirt gun. They're all excited about Christianity. But they endure for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, because of your stand, because of your testimony, by and by they are offended. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wimpy Christians. Notice again in verse 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Thank God for Obama that verse 22 cannot happen anymore. There are no more deceitfulness of riches. Okay, whatever. But he that receives seed... I had to get political. It was good until I got there. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. What is the point? God wants you to get the word, get it engrafted in your body, endure through the temptation, and start bearing fruit. Amen. You can't do that if your ears are dull of hearing. And you can't do that if your ears are itching for only that which satisfies your own flesh and verifies your own desires. Impossible. There are all kinds of people in the church, in the church, who I believe may be saved, but their root goes no further than the first rock that it finds and doesn't sink down deep into the earth that God has prepared for them. Why? Because you've got to have a strong root system. Why? Because the winds are going to blow. That's right. That's right. That you're going to have trial. You're going to have tribulation. You're going to have family members that are going to stab you in the back. You're going to have church members stab you in the back. You're going to have pastors falling by immorality and you're going to have to stand stale uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ no matter what happens to your preacher. You're going to have to endure some things. Amen. It, but your roots got to go down. It's, it can't be superficial. It can't be, well, oh, bless God, you know, uh, God's real good, but I had this bad thing happen. Maybe He's just trying to test the waters here and see just what kind of meat you're made of. That's right. We do that with politicians. We do that with family members. We do that with employees. But God can't do that with you? Come on, man. Don't you think God's got higher standards than you? Mary's already offended. There she goes. Number three. Number three. 